Setting up rate control in field IQ may vary depending on the implement type selected as well as the material type that implement will be controlling. In the rate control tab, the first option you will have is to configure the settings. In the settings tab, you can enable or disable rate control for this channel. Record coverage on applied flow rate is referring to the as applied map recorded in the display being based on the readings coming back from the flow meter or the encoder on the channel that it is controlling. The number of drives is referring to the number of rate control modules that are connected to this control channel. Typically, one location uses one rate control module, but in some setups, such as a split planter, you may have multiple drives for one channel. If setting up a liquid channel, you will also need to specify the number of nozzles on the boom. It is critical that this number is correct when performing a jug test for flow calibration. An incorrect value here could lead to incorrect calibration of the flow meter. Press the next arrow to continue the setup of rate control. If setting up a spreader, the next configuration page you will have is to configure the gate. Gate height is referring to the distance between the belt and the bottom of the gate. This setting can be adjusted on the go via the run screen if needed at any time. Gate width is referring to the opening left to right. Drag chain length per turn is referring to the length of the belt that passes through the gate on one revolution. Depending on the number of drives defined previously for this channel, we'll determine how many are displayed here. To configure the drive, press the drive that you want to configure. The setup options in Valve Setup will vary depending on the implement and material type used. Regardless of implement and material type, the system will ask you to define the serial number of the rate control module that will be connected to this location. You will then need to specify the type of drive mechanism used in this control channel. The drive types available are as follows. Electric over hydraulic, which is an electric motor with a hydraulic assistance to turn the metering device. Fast bypass servo is a servo valve regulating the flow back to tank to maintain accurate application rate at the boom. Fast servo is a servo valve that controls the flow of liquid to the boom to maintain the correct rate. These valves have four wires consisting of a 12 volt ground as well as the increase and decrease signal wires. The main difference between a standard servo and a bypass servo is the polarity of the increase and decrease wires. Hardy percentage flow bypass is referring to a particular plumbing setup on the section motors where the excess flow is diverted back to tank when a section is switched off. This allows the system to maintain correct rate out of each individual section without having to adjust the regulation valve. Linear actuator, which is an, act which is an actuator typically changing the speed of a ground drive gearbox. PWM is using two wires to control a hydraulic system or an electric motor via a pulse width modulation. If using an electric motor and PWM controls, it is recommended that you use a signal amplifier as the module itself cannot handle the maximum amperage that electric motors may draw. Pump servo is referring to a standard servo valve controlling the flow of hydraulic oil to a pump which regulates the flow of liquid. Standard bypass servo is referring to a standard two-wire servo valve controlling the flow of product back to tank to maintain correct application rate at the boom. Standard servo is referring to a two-wire servo valve controlling the flow of product to the boom to maintain correct application rate. The main differences between standard and bypass is the polarity of the signal wires. The next configurable settings is auxiliary valve. If setting up a liquid channel, you will have the options of disabled, dump or master. If setting up an implement using a granular product, you will have the options of material clutch positive and material clutch negative also. With auxiliary valve set to dump or material clutch negative, when the master switch is off, a 12 volt is supplied to a valve or clutch to activate it. On a liquid system, this would be opening a valve dumping liquid back to tank when the master switch is off. On an air cart or planter, this would be an individual bin clutch that would be earthed to engage when the master switch is on. With auxiliary valve set to master or material clutch positive, the polarity is reversed and 12 volt supply will be sent to the valve or clutch only when the master switch is turned on. Control valve or drive behaviour when sections are closed is referring to the control mechanism's behaviour when all sections are closed or the master switch is off. 
Setting to close will mean that the servo valve will wind shut to the home position or if using PWM controls, the pulse width modulation will be set to 0%. Setting to lock in last position is typically the setting we would use for a spray rig. This will mean that the regulation valve will stay in the last position when all sections are closed. This allows for faster acquisition of on-target rate when re-entering an unsprayed area. Lock at minimum position is referring to a PWM style control when the system knows the percentage of pulse width modulation required before the valve will start to move. When setting up a liquid system, you will have the option of a pump arming switch. Enabling this option will provide a soft button on the run screen which when activated provides a 12 volt output sent from the rate section control module. Typically, this is connected to a pump arming mechanism on some self-propelled sprayers. On a planter or air cart type operation, you will have the option of pump or ground drive setting. This is either going to be a 12 volt feed to a clutch when the master switch is on or a 12 volt feed when the master switch is off. This is indicated with a graphical icon on the run screen. Typically, this is used as a master clutch on a ground drive implement. When setting up the drive with a granular product, the last option you will have is to reduce the drive speed when sections are closed. Depending on how the sections stop the distribution of the product will determine whether this setting needs to be enabled or not. If, for instance, your metering device is a single roller distributing product across all section tubes, you will not want the speed of the distribution roller to change when one tube is turned off. This will affect the rate of product going out other sections. Use the next arrow to configure the feedback setup. Depending on whether you are running a liquid or granular or row crop seed will depend on the settings required in this menu. For a liquid system, you will need to define the type of flow meter installed. Select the units in which the flow meter calibration number will be entered. The flow meter calibration number can be found on the tag of the actual flow meter itself. If setting up a granular fertilizer or a seed, you will need to enter the shaft encoder constant. This is the number of pulses per revolution at the metering device. The next step is your gear ratio. Depending on where the encoder is mounted will depend on whether you need to put in a gear ratio or not. A gear ratio of 1 is assuming that the encoder is mounted on the driven gear meaning that for every revolution of the metering device equals one full revolution of the encoder. If your encoder is mounted somewhere other than the driven gear, you will need to enter a gear ratio. To calculate a gear ratio, use the gear ratio calculator. Set the number of gear sets and then enter the number of teeth for both the driven and drive gear that is in each set between the encoder and the distribution point. This process is the same if setting up a planter and the only additional setting you will have is the number of seeds per disc. Press the check mark to save the settings for your drive and feedback. Repeat this process for any other modules you have connected to this location for subsequent drives. Use the next arrow to configure your width. The width should be predefined from the implement setup if you are only configuring one drive for that channel. If configuring more than one drive for that channel, you will need to specify the individual width of each drive. If setting up a planter, you will have the option of grouping rather than specifying a width. To group rows to a location, select the module you want to assign and then select the rows you want to assign to that module. Once drive width or row grouping has been completed, use the next arrow to the adjustments tab. In the rate control adjustment tab, you will notice that the configurable items will differ depending on whether or not you have a master switch box connected. With a master switch box connected, you can configure manual override speed, which is the set speed if the implement drops below flow control will automatically maintain this set speed. System minimum flow is a value that will trigger a warning if the flow rate for that product drops below this setting. Manual rate switch aggressiveness is referring to how the valve reacts to the increase and decrease button on the master switch box. A value of 100% is in actual fact a midpoint and a value higher will cause the valve to be more aggressive when manually adjusting. A lower value will make the valve less aggressive when manually adjusting. This setting has nothing to do with the automatic rate control in normal operation and only affects the valve when set in the manual mode. No flow timeout 
is a predefined amount of time that the system will operate without warning when no flow or feedback is detected. With no master switch box connected, you will only have the options of manual rate switch aggressiveness and no flow timeout. Use the next arrow to continue with the implement setup.